Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Um, um, my name is Emmanuel, um, and I'll be your host for um, this webinar. We are set to begin. Before we go forward, can I please request that all uh, participants turn off their videos at this time um, so that we are able to manage the process? So please turn off your videos, turn off your audios, and then uh, we will begin shortly and you can participate. At some point in the session, we will have um, um, a time where um, we will be open to take questions. We'll be open to take questions and at such times, um, you, you will be free to unmute your audio and ask your question. At such times, you'll be free to unmute your audio and ask your questions. But before then, um, let us please um, turn off our videos and turn off our audios. We are five minutes behind schedule. Um, we will be starting shortly. We are still having a lot of people come in. Uh, so we will just give that a few more minutes as they come in and then we will begin quickly. All right, so once again, welcome. Thank you for um, signing up on the, on the business and economic webinar program organized by Guiding Light Assembly, Abuja Worship Center. Um, I will now start the meeting. We still have people coming in, uh, but we will not wait any further. We are eight minutes behind schedule now. So I think it's the right thing to do to begin this session. I would like to, on behalf of um, the senior pastors of Guiding Light Assembly, Abuja Worship Center, uh, welcome everyone to the Business and Economic Webinar Series. This is the first of three uh, sessions we'll be having over the next three weeks. Um, and the theme is the future of business. Now, I'd like to say that this is an initiative of um, the senior partners of Guiding Light and allow me just give an, um, an overview or a brief history how uh, we have come to this point. So it's no news that uh, we are all in the midst of a pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic. And um, as a response to the COVID-19 pandemic, um, initially the church um, initiated a, a health series where we had a couple of doctors come in um, and enlighten first, uh, uh, enlighten members of the church and those that follow us um, on the uh, health aspects of the COVID-19 pandemic. And um, that was important because there was a lot of fear, there, were, uh, there was a lot of information uh, outside and many people were not sure what to make of the information they were getting. So um, to allay the fears and give a direction and help, help people navigate from a health perspective, we had the health series. But um, now about going to two months into the pandemic, um, it has become obvious that beyond the health concerns, we are now faced with a huge economic crisis. Uh, because of the pandemic and the subsequent lockdown, um, a lot of businesses have not been able to operate. Um, those that have, operate, have been able to operate have been limited in their operations. And without doubt, one of the consequences of what we, will, what we are experiencing now is uh, that many people will lose their job um, after this is all done. Many businesses after this is all done will realize that um, they are no longer in business. And even those who uh, don't lose their jobs, they, there is a huge possibility of 
um, loss of income for many people. So the idea of um, the business and economic uh, webinar series is to help provide insight um, so that um, as many people as we can get, um, to as many people as we can get, so that they are able to effectively respond and navigate um, the current pandemic. We don't want to react. We want to be able to respond uh, such that um, not only do we survive, at the end of the day, we come out thriving in our finances as at business level or at personal level. That's the idea behind um, the business and economic webinar series. So uh, once again, uh, once again, I'd like to say thank you for signing up. Um, I'm personally excited about this because we have lined up um, amazing people, people I know personally, most of them, um, and they are excellent business people. They are excellent entrepreneurs, and I'm excited about the insight we will be getting from them all through the session. So um, mark your calendar 14th, which is today we're having the first session. Um, next week on the 21st, we'll have the second session, and then the final session will happen on the 28th of May, 2020, and all of them same time, 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. Um, so, welcome to the future of business. Um, quickly, um, as your host, let me quickly take us through what the program will look like. Um, I have just done the welcome and the introduction. All right, um, we've taken um, additional three minutes, so we will take note of that as we go forward. Um, next, I will be uh, calling up um, one of our excellent facilitators, Mr. John Epiki, to um, do a presentation. Um, and he'll be doing a presentation on the future of business, adapting to rapidly changing realities. And he will be coming from the strategic management perspective. So this will be very important for uh, business owners and um, senior management staff in businesses such that we want to be able to adapt and um, navigate our businesses in this time. And then we will have another presentation by Mrs. Yinka Adinube Olania. And same, it's on the future of business adapting to rapidly changing realities. But this time around, she will be coming from a personal um, and employee perspective. So if you don't have a business, um, how should you respond to this? Um, what skills should, be, should you be learning? How should you adapt your final, uh, personal economy and your uh, finances um, to uh, manage possible loss of income and all that? And then immediately after that, we will open up the session to, to um, interaction. So we'll have questions, we'll have uh, comments. The speakers will have opportunities to respond to all our questions. All right, so um, while the presentations are going on, please, if you have questions, take note of them. And then um, we have um, good time here, ample time, 45 minutes, we'll respond to the questions. And then uh, we will have the closing remarks by our senior pastor, Apostle Israel W. Abam. So quickly, um, the next person that comes up after this, like I said, is Mr. John Epiki. He is the managing partner at CLM Consulting. Mr. John has provided training and capacity building for several institutions, such some of such include Diamond Bank, Sky Bank, Federal Mortgage Bank, and he has worked with several SMEs. He is a business development service provider with vast skills working with SMEs. His knowledge and experience cuts across business process development process development, SME growth consulting, economic development, due diligence reports, restructuring plans, financial management, product costing, investment appraisal, feasibility studies, business plans, computerized stock management, budgeting and budgetary control, revenue generation strategies, and business management advisory services. 
He has several years of experience doing this. He's excellent at what he does. We are blessed and privileged to have him with us. All right, so um, let's make welcome Mr. John Epike to take over. So over to you, Mr. John Epike. Um, you can turn on your video and you will have the spotlight and then you can share your screen. Welcome everybody. Thank God for technology. I believe I'm talking across the globe or across the country to as many of our members and our friends that have been able to tune in. This is the GLM um, Business and Economic um, Webinar. We're going to be talking about the future of business. And I have been introduced, so I don't think that I will need to be introduced again or I, I will not need to introduce myself again. So I'll go right straight to the things I'm going to be talking to you about. The future of business. I believe that all future know leave clues for us to follow. And I'm simply going to follow a three points agenda or table of content for what we want to talk about today. I want to look at the past. What does the past tell us about the future? Then I want to come to the present and see what is going on in our economic environment or in our business environment. And then I'll see what that teaches about the future. And then we're going to try to answer the question, what is the future of business by the end um, of, the, of the webinar? I do not have too much time and I would have loved to develop this. Normally we would develop this over um, an eight or 16 hours of um, production or, or meeting time. I'm going to be talking about adapting to the rapidly changing realities of our time. I think that the, 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 the best way for me to try to um, discuss or introduce this subject is the picture you are looking at. Recently, we've been faced with coronavirus, and in this picture, the bear that you are looking at um, is the coronavirus that has been chasing us, chasing our family, and chasing our businesses. And if you can see how everybody is scrambling, this is exactly what we did. Some of us fell, some of us left our business doors unlocked and just ran inside the house and stayed indoors, all for the fear of corona. And our businesses took different turns. As we go through the past, it's, it's, we've been able to, to learn some things, or the past has told us some things. In the past, we've all we have needed to do was just to stay ahead. All, all we needed to do to stay ahead was just to stay and beat the competition next to you, the physical competition, your industry competition, the, the, the global leader of your industry, and better than the industry leader. But because of the rapid changes that we are experiencing, the pyramid has been flattened, and we are now faced with a different kind of competition. We have to be engaged or engaged is now the new competition. You have before you, you would, you would see the act we have in, in with having to adjust. Basically, our business act has been, let me just be better than the first in front of me. If I can just, I don't have to run faster than the bear. I just have to run faster than the next person. If I can just be faster than one person, then the bear is going to catch the person, not me. And that's been the general business attitude um, of the entire population when you look at it. 
we've always tried to be better than the next person, but the coronavirus changed all of that. Right now, the biggest thing we have to do is stop, change our business attitudes, and embrace our humanity. One of the biggest things that we've learned from the coronavirus is that we are human. We are not that super um, being that we all thought about ourselves. We have seen how easy and how very easy it is for the situation to just turn us totally out of whack. And this is really what we are learning from now. The coronavirus has revealed that mankind is not that super agent that we taught ourselves. Very simple things can just turn us and we become victims of our own surroundings. If you look at the history of disruptions, and I need to tell you disruptions have been going on throughout history. One of the things that I've found out about specifically our economic history is that mankind has been experiencing disruptions all through but the main story is how have we coped with it and that's what history is teaching us the key for us to know how we have coped with our economic um disruptions that has been about question how does it affect our human needs? How does the disruption affect the basic needs of the human being? As long as you can answer that question, you can cope with the disruption. Every disruption comes to one thing. Disrupt your ability to meet your basic needs. If you can understand that, then you know exactly how you can deal with it. We have this in so many times, and I'm going to say, how do I exist? And then maybe we had some safety issues. We also had to look about safety, how to get order, how to get law enforcement, set some boundaries so that human beings don't come in contact with us unnecessarily. Those were the things we had to do. And then as we found ourselves locked up in, in this situation, we began to ask some self-awareness questions or self-fulfillment questions. So what do I do? So we began to look for personal fulfillment. We began to look for the, the ways we can improve ourselves and grow ourselves. When you look at all of this and you look at the ladder on the map, you will see the human need continuum. You will find out that when the pandemic happened to us, we faced only three things, existential needs, safety needs, and self-awareness needs. The need for self-esteem, for status, for, for, for responsive, for reputation, all of those things, even family. If your family was not next to you, you left them where they were and said, please stay safe. Don't, don't take the risk and try to come. Just stay where you are. When this thing is over, we would respond. So if you were trying to determine how coronavirus was affecting our, our lives, you would see them in these three boxes that I have circled um, in green. And that basically determined how we were going to respond to the coronavirus and what was happening. This is the, this is the lesson from history. Throughout history, there's been this kind of disruption at least four times that we can know in our own recent history. Of course, you remember the prehistoric beings that eventually became us. We, 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 we existed in that time basically for food and shelter. And all we needed to do to survive was to figure out how to use basic tools for hunting and to secure our environment. This is the history or lesson from prehistoric times. And then of course, we went into the agricultural revolution and basically, we be, man began to learn how to feed himself, how to cook instead of going into the, into the bush to, to grab some wild things to eat. Man began to learn how to, 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 to plant and how to harvest and how to store food. And then the agricultural revolution took place and all of life changed again. The agricultural revolution became the biggest change for humankind. We began to have 
communities form because we could feed them and then this began to 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 create villages and eventually the cities as we knew it today because people could come into the cities and eat and as people began to gather in our history we began to see that they could begin to produce more and more they were introducing technology they were introducing um factories manufacturing took over and basically the industrial revolution moved us from the agrarian society that we were living into and then eventually we got into the information revolution the information revolution is almost where we are now, even though we are leaving that um, part of it again. We got into the revolution of the internet. We got into the World Wide Web. We began to have computers, and then we began to do computerizations of all the business processes that we had. We began to discover handheld devices and mobile systems and then we eventually we moved on to the cloud. Now, what did all of this do for us? It basically did one thing. It gave human beings for the first time the biggest power to have data, to control and be able to analyze our human behaviors in the largest um, uh, 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 um, um, possible variations. Today, I can look at my phone and I can see where I have gone to in the last one month. I can look at the different data as I've collected in the different social media, and I can see the different places. Data has been basically the major advantage that has given us power. Now, when you look at all of that, it boils down to one big question. What has all of this taught us? It has taught us that in every struggle of humanity, the biggest problem we have is how to meet our, it has come to improve our ability to meet needs. Now, what does the present teach us? Let's look at the present and see where we are in terms of what the present is teaching us. And to do this in my lifetime, I'm using myself as um, a life example here. In my lifetime, we have seen major disruptions in so many areas. And I'm going to use just two basic cases to deal with it. I've seen in printing, I've seen a, a total revolution in the color separation industry. And if we have time, I'll tell you um, a story about that. We've seen books. Before we were having physical books, we've seen books from physical to ebooks and we've seen analog phones turn to smartphones we've seen um cassettes turn to itunes we've seen so many disruptions i can count at least six disruptions in our day-to-day -day activities and let me just go through two of those cases with you to show us where we are going in all of this i want to look at the music um, business because I did a lot of music um, earlier in life. If you look at the picture in front of you, everything that we knew maybe about 30, 20 years ago was physical music. In order for you to listen to music, you had to go and play it. There was no gadget that you could listen to. The highest thing you could hear was the microphone. But basically, if, if you wanted to hear music, um, basically like 20 years ago, or even 30, let's be generous, you had to go and listen to a hall of people playing music. Every sound you had had to be created by a human being and a human instrument. But we went from there and we came to this. Today, all I have to do is turn up my phone, punch some numbers, and my airport fills my ears with any kind of music that I want to listen to. So how did we go from this to this? That's the story of the disruption we have seen in the music industry. And this is the reason. If you look at that, 
I have shown you a simple device. It's your handheld mobile um, phone. Everything that we've done in the music revolution, we took these guys that were playing music, we found a way to digitalize everything they were doing, transfer that data process into this system, and from this system, we can listen to it. So no longer do we need to go together and play the drums, play the trumpet. All of that thing has been digitalized now. So if you were an old time musician, you're out of a job. You now have to learn to program your keyboard and create the music that we are now listening to. That's what has happened to the music industry. If you can follow me down the lane of history, you would see that, you remember the old gramophone? This was how the music that was generated in the, in, in the early times, we could listen to music. We had to use the whole turntable, we used to call it. And then the vinyl records came in um, in the early 70s. And we began to listen to the, the you know, those vinyl records that um, we, we so um, ended up loving. And then I don't know if you are old enough, you remember the eight trackers. The eight trackers was also part of what revolution was showing us of how mankind has moved in terms of technology. And then I was a major player here. Um, the cassettes, I, I don't know if you can still remember seeing the cassettes. This reigned for about 20 years from 1980 to the 2000s. And then immediately after that, we had the CDs and the CD-ROMs. All of this was different technology sharpening the things that we were busy doing. And I'm putting you through this because I want you to understand how the revelation, that, the revolution that we are, are entering is going to be handled and how it will work for your own good. And then you remember we went from CDs to CD-ROMs and then eventually to DVDs. And then as if just when we were getting used to DVDs, the MP3 players came in and you could store so many music into it. I remember I used to load um, my MP3 player, plug it into my um, car, and then for hours we'll be listening to music. No longer did I have to buy cassettes or go to buy CDs. And then just like we were getting used to that, the iPod came in and then eventually we moved to the airport that most of my daughters are now using airports. And basically, that whole era dropped and changed. Today, all I have to do to listen to any form of music, I do not need the physical, I mark you, mark that word, the physical music was no longer necessary. The music industry went into digitalization and came out with digital tunes. All the music that was created physically left the physical realm and went into the internet. Now you can listen to any music, create any music on the net. The business of music left the physical form. The products that we knew before, the guitars, the drums, all of those things are technically absolute today. You don't need to play the guitar to make music any longer. But all of that was translated into your keyboards and all of that. And eventually, you can just go to your laptop, you can go to your phone and download practically any tune that you want to. Today, a, a, an app called Spotify can give you any millions and millions of music are in there now and all you need to do is just download that system i don't know if you remember your videos same thing we went from videos and eventually dvds and all of that now you just go to your laptop and you can download netflix is the thing that has changed the entire industry netflix is now one of the biggest industry on earth and yet they don't have any products everything has gone on the net you need to understand that. The focus on physical products 
are changing to the digital equivalent of the same things that we're looking at. The world is now a global village and everything is interconnected. Until you understand this, you will not know how to move your business forward. You need to understand that the way we used to do business in terms of the physical products, the biggest shift in your head, you need to understand that physical products with physical human beings in a physical place is changing. Let me repeat that. You need to understand that physical products whatever they may be, is changing in the mood of presentation. You need to find out how to take your physical product, translate it through the digitalization process into a mode that can enter the internet and then is distributed worldwide. Until you know this, yeah. you will not be able to handle well, what the future the holds because that is what history has taught us. I remember in printing, we used to print physical books. Today, nobody is printing physical books, or at least it is in a very, very small quantity. Everything has gone into digital form. Today, I look at my um, internet and I can download any book. What happened between the physical book translating into the digital format? That is the change that we have seen. And that is the present change that is going on around us. The goal of the internet is to duplicate or to, not to replace, but to, to duplicate everything that human beings are doing in real life has to from one way or the other, be translated into the internet. The goal of the internet, and this you can check with Google and everybody, everything that we're doing on Earth in the physical form, the goal is to have the equivalent of it trans transacting on the net. And that's the key in us understanding where we're going. If you look at graph before you, you would see that things are changing so rapidly. We are moving from a situation where we had 7.5 or call it 7.8 billion people on earth. Out of that, 5.1 billion or 5.2 billion of them are using mobile phones. Mobile phones. We are using them. And then 4.5 of us are on the internet. So we have about 59% penetration and usage of the internet as at today. So you will see that if you look at the way things are, mankind is getting very close to replicating the goal of transferring human users from life to the internet. And this is going on even as we speak. Social media has to has close to 4 billion users today. All of those count towards the new business format or new business model that we are going to be seeing. And the whole reason this is happening is the internet as we know it is going to take our life, life form Everything that we are doing as a life human being, the products, the services, anything that we're doing is going to move from real life and is going to move into the internet. The power of the internet is going to be that the internet will govern all that we are going to do in life. It's going to govern and all of that. But that's the power of the internet. Everything that we're doing in life is going to be having an equivalent on the internet. Now let's move forward. So I'm going to try now to put all of this together and, and, and try to summarize all the things that we're saying. What is the future of business? In one word, the future of business is the internet. 
which we call the internet of things. Listen, everything that we're going to do is going to move from real life situations, it's going to move to the internet. Now, if you look at it, anything, anyone, any device, anything that we have, anyone, anybody, anytime, any content, any path, any network, anywhere, any place on earth, any service, any business, any product. All of these things has to go into the net. In the next couple of years, everything that you are doing today is going to be replicated on the internet. The goal is to have the life of our, or everything that we're doing in life to be translated into the internet of things. Please write down the word internet of things because that's the future of where we're going. If you look at the picture you're seeing there, everything that we've known up to now, any service, any product, any form, if you see yourself on this page and in any other page, as long as your product is in a physical form, you have to produce it in a physical form, you have to sell it in a physical form or sell it to a location, you will be disrupted. Anything that cannot be digitalized and translated into the internet will be disrupted. It is only a matter of time. The future of business is, is the internet of things. If you cannot do your business in any of these formats, it's either you translate it to a major application or to a smartphone or through the internet or through some digital technology or electronic device. If your business cannot be translated and operated from any of these devices, you are going to be disrupted. Your business is going to be disrupted sooner or later. History has taught us that. The music industry was disrupted and physical components became digital components. Printing was disrupted. Physical books became digital books. If you go through history, most of the things that we know today have moved from the product of physical form to the digitalized version of it. And if you do not catch it, you will be disrupted. Today, everything that comes to man or in the future, everything that comes to man and how we will use it and interact with it is going to come from one form of internet service or the other. It will not be from physical locations anymore. The journey is going to be simple. You can see that we moved from the big uh, the desktops that we were using. We went to laptops. Now, hardly do you see anybody with a laptop. Everybody is now holding some form of um, a handheld device. And very soon, as you can see, everything is moving to the cloud. Where are we going? The power of the, um, the revolution that we are facing has to do with basically this is the, 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 the graph that you really need to understand. Anything that you have that is called things, service products or things, anything, the cars you are selling, the blenders you are using, the furniture you are using, all of these things have to find expression in the digitalized form. Whether you have to do it manually, whether you have to convert it to comp through computerization or through, through digitalization, you have to find a way where you are doing your current business on the net. You can load it either on your own net or you can have your own cloud service or you use other cloud services, but you have to upload your business to the net. And then you are only going to be able to sell, to transact, to trade, to do the current businesses you are doing to the extent that you are connected. So this is the three cycle of where the future of business is all about. We are moving from physical product 
to the internet version of the same things that we are doing. We've seen this in all the industry that I've spoken about. And then from there, you are going to reach human beings by being connected. So we are going to transfer it in any form, whether it's partial or full. We have to learn how to move the things that we're doing from the internet into the connected world. That's, like I told you, remember that the internet of things, remember that the internet of things. Now, how is this done? I'm not going to bore you because my time is up. I've, I ran out of my time, but I'm not going to bore you with a lot of the details. This is what we do um, in business architecture. Basically, what we need to learn is take anything that you are doing today, whatever it is, whether you're cooking food, whether you are driving cars, whatever it is that you are doing that is in the physical form, you need to take it and do what is called process mapping. You need to find out how you are doing it. And then you're going to have to call one of the digital people, the IT people. You need to sit with the IT people and find out how you are going to do the same on the net. You're going to have to learn how to market your product on the net, or you're going to have to learn how to digitalize your product and turn it to a digital form, just like the books went to ebook, or you are going to learn how to use an app that will sell your service through the engagement of the app. Whatever you do, you need to sit down with your IT people and take your business maps, the things that you do, and show it to them, and they will find out how to take it from where you are and take it to the digitalization process. At the end of it, the future of business is going to go into digital business forms. Most of the things we're doing is going to go into one form of digitalization or the other. And this is the process which it takes. Of course, this, this takes you to so many walls that um, you would, this training will not allow us to go into it. But basically, this is what the future of business is all about. The future of business is going to go onto the net and everything that we're going to be doing is going to be in one form or the other via a digital process. I hope that you can sit with your business and look at it and ask yourself one basic question. How can I digitalize what I am doing today? Because that's the future of business. Anything, I repeat, anything that cannot be digitalized that you are doing today will be disrupted. And do not wait to be disrupted. Thank you very much for listening. And I will wait around for the question time in case you have um, any questions to ask at that time. I'm going to hand over now back to Pastor Emmanuel, who is um, hosting and moderating this activity. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, um, Mr. John Epiki. Um, that was insightful. I believe um, everyone would have, would have gotten something. Um, the, the key thing for business owners and managers is the strategic direction for your business right now has to be um, digitalization. All right, um, aspects or segments of your be digitalized. Some things you cannot digitalize. For example, you cannot di digitalize the food that we eat. So for, if you're in a food um, service, you cannot digitalize that, but you can digitalize how you contact people, how you sell your products. So there is a way, like he said, the key thing is internet of things. Internet of things, how to maximize the internet, all right? So we are getting ready to go to the next section um, of the presentation. Um, hold on a second. The next person we will be having up is Mrs. Yinka Adinube Olania. She's an entrepreneur. 
a business leader, best-selling author, um, and youth empowerment advocate. She is a seasoned business and technology expert with over 20 years of professional experience. Her areas of competence cut across business and technical advisory services, human capital development, and entrepreneurship. Due to her educational background in both information technology and economics, she's an amazing person. I trust we will have an amazing time um, as she comes up. So, uh, Mrs. Yinka, over to you. Um, you can come up now. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, nice to be here. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. John. That was a very wonderful presentation. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. Um, thank you for sharing knowledge and information. Um, like um, Pastor Emmanuel said, um, it's, it's an honor to be here, um, to share, for us to learn from each other and see how we can move forward from the present situation that we find ourselves overnight. Um, not to waste anybody's time, I'd like to jump straight into my presentation and we can just take it up from there. My presentation is on the future of business, adapting to rapidly changing realities, but on a personal and employee, um, that's where my presentation is going to focus on. We'll have um, just a quick outline of what this is going to be about. So um, just so that we have, um, we have a structure in doing this. I'll just give a brief about myself um, and then we'll talk about COVID-19, talk about something that I call moving forward, um, how to dominate life. And then we'll talk about our talents, something I'm extremely passionate about. Um, like Pastor Emmanuel said, I'm an entrepreneur, a business leader, an author, uh, and I believe in the youth. I believe that um, the youth have to get it better than we did. Um, I believe we owe it to them to show them how to move on and how to live a more purposeful life. Um, it's a passion of mine, and I just hope that at the end of this session, everybody can go away with something, not personally for themselves alone, but as well for the younger generation coming behind us. There's something that I have that I call my manifesto. Okay, uh, the, the common word is called manifesto, but for me, it's my manifesto. I personally help people to unveil and develop by nurturing their innate potential so that he has bona fide superpowers empty. I believe we all in develop. That is my philosophy about now Let's go to the meat of the matter, COVID-19. COVID-19 started in Wuhan in China, 2019, late December. If anybody told me that we'll be living the way we're living right now, I would say no, because I figured, you know what, they would get a handle over it. It's not going to get to Nigeria. And if it did, it's not going to shut down the world the way it has. We experienced COVID-19 in Nigeria sometime in March. There are actually two schools of thought. Some people said it came in first in Enugu. Some people said it came in first through Lagos, through the guy that came to Lafarge. But the important thing is COVID-19 is here and it's rocking our world. And for now, we do not have any cure for it. Um, this stats that you have here is one of the latest stats that um, I got uh, today, actually. The amount of deaths we have for COVID-19 now is about 300,000. The amount of active cases globally is about 2.5 million. The amount of recovered people is about 1.7. And in total, we would say that COVID has actually um, infected about 4.5 million people, of which some of them are dead, some of them are still active cases, and some of them have recovered. Thank God for that. Okay, what are the challenges that we've had from COVID-19? As I said, COVID is here and it's indeed rocking our world. Part of the challenges we've had for COVID-19 is we've had economic challenges, we've had financial challenges, we're still experiencing them, we have health challenges, we have education challenges because most of our children are home. Uh, Nigeria that never believed in homeschooling, homeschooling has now become a way of life now. And of course, we have social challenges. Prior to now, 
nobody's a lot of people will probably not be on zoom as we have zoom now for a lot of things Every, everything happens on in zoom everything happens on teams everything happens in google classroom so those are the challenges we've had as a result of covid 19 is are what we feel on a daily basis in each of our lives part of those consequences we have include unemployment a lot of people right now even though they are still gainfully employed, they don't know how long their jobs are gonna last. Some of them have actually been given the brown envelope. Some of them have had to sign new contract papers that is not to their advantage. And then from that as well, we have underemployment. Underemployment in the sense that a lot of people at the end of this will have to probably take jobs that are way below their qualifications or simply because they don't have an alternative and they still need to keep body and soul together. We have uh, reports uh, from the World Bank saying that this COVID-19, by the end of 2020, if we're not careful, the estimate is between 40 and 60 million, but the, 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 but the, the, the actual figure they're looking at is COVID is going to throw about 49 million people into extreme poverty. Not just poverty, extreme poverty by the, by the end of 2020. And at the same time, by the end of the decade, it could be half a billion people being thrown into extreme poverty because of COVID-19. We've had reports it's on the papers, it's in the news that this could be an indication of another global recession coming through. We have food security issues. Uh, for instance, now for the past couple of, like two weeks, I've been trying to get bananas. There are no bananas. That's just simply bananas. Um, not to talk of other things that probably we import into the country or they're stuck in other parts of the country that we don't have access to. We've had issues of poor health in the sense that those that have pre-existing conditions have been worsened by COVID. Even those that have, I mean, normal health conditions are scared to go to the hospital because they don't know what they can contract by going to the hospital. The fatality, the death rate is really just scary. It's scary. It's, um, it's, it's it, I mean, I have never seen anything like this on, uh, in, in my entire lifetime. And it's just, um, like the experts will say, we haven't yet uh, picked on the curve. So they still expect that a lot more people are going to die. We pray we don't have any of those deaths in, 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 in our own immediate or, or distant circles, but that is the projection based on what we have on ground. The quality of life of people have drastically dropped. Why? Because people are just basically um, looking for the essentials. Um, nobody's thinking of luxury. Um, nobody is thinking of um, uh, parties. Nobody's thinking of weddings. Nobody's thinking of the usual thing Nigerians that you say the happiest people would normally will do. And of course, another consequence of this would be that the income equality would become larger. What this means is that the, poor, um, the, the, the opportunity of having to the result of COVID. Now, they talk about to provide the required internet access, the kits, the equipment that the children need to go to school. School has stopped, that's what it means. Oil and gas, that's another uh, story entirely. Um, I, I mean, uh, for me, I, I filled my car last in March and I don't have a need to fill it because I'm not going anywhere. So that as well has created some problems. But amidst all that, we still have winners as well. And the reason why I'm highlighting this on the personal perspective is, even though, for instance, you might be an employee, for instance, in the construction or real estate business, or in oil and gas, or in maritime, or in aviation, I'm happy to let you know that there are potential winners from this crisis. The potential winners is agriculture. Why? People will forever eat. People will forever need to feed. So there is a potential there. E-commerce, like uh, Mr. John Elias said, everything is going on e out of the crisis situation. Personal and healthcare, 
Everybody, all those uh, um, industries that are providing that service are actually going to find out that they would increase their profits, they would increase their revenues. Food processing and retail. Why? Because nobody wants to go to the open market. So instead of you going to the open market, even though it might be cheaper to buy your, your food stuff, if there's a corner store near your area, you'd rather buy from them. And that means that they buy bulk, they package, and you buy from them. So there's potential um, business in that arena, as well as for the medical supply and services. Everybody now does face masks. Everybody now does protective gear. You don't need to leave your house to get it. If you, op I mean, if you sign up to your phone, you have people sending you stuff or post on Instagram saying, um, I can supply you masks, I can supply you all of those. The essence of why I'm sounding this is yes, COVID is crisis situation. There's always opportunity in crisis. And we just need to open our minds and open our eyes to see where the potential opportunities are to be able to survive this. I have this video that I called Reality Check. I'd like us to just watch it and then we will continue with the presentation. To the cemetery because you know I came here and wanted to change my life. It made me realize that we're all going to be here. Like this is the that everybody lives and everybody dies. And I don't want that to make you afraid. I want that to motivate you. Les Brown says it best. The richest place in the world, look around. It's here. You know why? There's so many songs that were never sung, so many ideas that were left inside. I don't want to get to this place full of incomplete, incomplete visions, not living the life regret people have when they're about to die. They wish they would have lived a life full of going for it. They regret that they live for other people's opinions. They regret that they live in fear. I don't want you to live a life full of, I wish I would have. I want you to live a life, man, I tried, I did, I failed, I accomplished. Because once you get here, so you only get one life. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. I just imagine if I gave you $86 every single day and I said you had to spend it, you couldn't take the $86 until tomorrow, what would you do with that money? You would spend it, right? Well, that's the same with time. Time is the greatest luxury because no matter how rich you are, you can't buy time. What's There's 86,000 seconds in a day. And most people, they waste it. The average life is 26,000 days at 71 years old. I'm 35. halfway there. And there's going to come a time when I'm not here anymore. And I'll say, you know what? I'm going to make sure. Don't come to this place with greatness left inside of you. You're legendary, son. But it's time for you to give that to the world. Regret is one of the strongest things in the world. You know why? <laughs> You're 11 years old. Right? Dad, I'm only 11. I got time. Let me tell you something a wise man once told me. You're old or young because of your death date. There's an 11 year old that has one month left to live. And there's a 50 year old that has 40 years left to live. We never know when that year is going to be our last year. What matters is what you do between the dash. You're going to live a long life. But I want to make sure that you make every single day count. Heroes get remembered. But legends never die. Go become legendary. Don't be afraid of coming here because we all got to come here. Be afraid. I'm not truly living your life.
I love you. Make the world respect the greatest. Okay. Um make the world respect your greatness. For us to understand that even though we're going through COVID right now, everything looks like doom and gloom, but we still it because we don't have all the time in the world. And at the same time, life still goes on. So moving forward from COVID on a personal perspective, despite the fact that you might have lost your job, despite the fact that you might have a paid cut, despite the fact that every single thing you never thought was would happen to you is happening to you you need to move forward why because you still have breath in you and you still have a purpose to fulfill moving forward would require a couple of things would require you have vision will require you have a mindset would require you have education and skills would require you have the right community of people and definitely again you need to be financially literate Vision, what is vision? Vision is basically, um, your pers vision is basically what you can see. Vision is your outlook to life. Vision is what you emphasize, what your imagination is telling you about life. And for you to be able to go forward in life, you must first of all see it in your mind before it happens. And guess what? Nobody's coming to help you. Nobody's coming to save you. You need to do this by yourself. And more than ever before, we need vision in our lives right now. If we've been living uh, like, um, like a robot, we wake up in the morning, we head to the island, we come back home, that's not, that's not happening right now. So therefore, you need to actually have vision for your life. And the vision you have is not just vision for your life, vision for your life, vision for your children, vision for your spouse, vision for, I mean, how, how you want to be remembered in, and, and whether you want to put your footprint in the sands of time. There are four pillars of vision. I'll call the first one hindsight. What is hindsight? Hindsight is the capacity to be able to use your experience, your exposure, your encounter, your education to inspire, inform, and influence being able to maximize your potential in life and achieve your goal. All the experiences you have gone through, even this COVID experience is something that you should put into your vision because it's part of the arsenal of things that will project you forward. Insight, what is insight? Insight is looking inwards, finding out what are your innate abilities, what are your talents, what are your special superpowers that makes you unique, and using that to be able to maximize your potential in life. What is foresight? Foresight is having to be able to envision how the world in front of you is evolving. Yes, like uh, Mr. John said, everything has to go online. So therefore, that's foresight. Now we're already there. You have to think, how do I take my catering business online? How do I take my painting business online? How do I take my, my, my tailoring business online? Because the world is moving. You need to move along with the world, otherwise you'll be left behind. And last but not the least is cross-site. Cross-site is the ability and the capacity for you to be able to maximize your potential, leveraging on the networks, leveraging on the relationships you have, like this platform, to be able to achieve your goal and impact your world. Secondly, you need to have the right mindset. What is mindset? Mindset is your perspective about life. Mindset is your outlook about life. Mindset is the thinking about life. For some people right now, the issue is COVID is here, and until COVID goes, nothing can happen. There are three different types of mindset. There's the fixed mindset, there's the growth mindset, and there's a benefit mindset. A fixed mindset person would tell you that ah, nothing good can happen out of Nigeria. I have to get to Canada before my dreams can be fulfilled. Nigeria, uh, Nigeria is not a good Please, everybody in Nigeria cannot make a head. A growth mindset person will say, you know what, I need to improve myself. I need to get some certifications to ensure that I can put myself and my family in a better, um, I mean, in a better situation in life, a better standard of living. That is a growth mindset and that too is good, but that's not the optimum. The optimum is a benefit mindset because as a, I mean, if you have a benefit mindset, it means you are, you are a solution provider. 
you look around and say, okay, there is a problem. How can I benefit the masses? How can I benefit the generality of the people such that at the end of the day, everybody is improved by this particular design or outcome of mine? So you need to have the right mindset. You need to move from a fixed mindset to the growth mindset to the benefit mindset to be able to beat this. In doing that, to be able to move forward, there are skills you need to learn. You need to be tech savvy. You, you, I mean, going forward in the new normal that I would call it post COVID era, you need to be tech savvy. You need to be able to do basic stuff with technology. Otherwise, you will, it's like you'll be suffocated. You won't be able to breathe. You need to be creative and innovative. Look for ways of doing things. You need to be able to be adaptable. You need to be able to be flexible. You need to have data literacy. You have to have critical thinking. You know, you have to be able to do complex decision making. You have to be emotionally intelligent. You know why you need to be emotionally intelligent? Even within your household, you have to be emotionally intelligent because this COVID thing has actually affected a lot of people mentally. Even though we might not see it, but there's a lot of mental health issues that will come out from this COVID issue. So you need to be emotionally intelligent to the people within your family system and as well outside your family system. You need to be a leader. You need to learn to collaborate. You can't say, oh, I want to be a one-man riot squad. No, it's not going to take you anywhere. Why? Because this is a global pandemic. It's affecting everybody. And therefore, for you to be able to get out of this, you need people. But you need the right set of people, the right community of people. And of course, you need cultural intelligence and diversity. Why? As we're having this particular call, people are probably signing in from everywhere in the world. Yes, when I am in Lagos, you are in, I mean, Guiding Light Assembly is in Abuja. You have people from all over the world signing in. And therefore, you need to be sensitive to the cultural and diversity issues of mankind. I talked about community as well as a way of moving forward. You cannot survive um, the issues and consequences of COVID by yourself. Why? Because there's a lot of hardship. There's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of panic. There's a lot of fear. Therefore, you need solidarity. You need support. You need information. You need guidance. And that can only happen if you have a reasonable community that you can share information with and everybody can grow together. So you need to leverage your relationships, you need to leverage your networks, and you need to ensure that you do the same for people as well. The last thing you need to do to be able to move forward is everybody now needs a bit of financial literacy. COVID has taught us that, you know what? You can't just assume that every day you go to work, at the end of the month, you get a salary. You need to plan better. You need to track your, track your spending. And obviously, you need to invest as well. You need to have an emergency fund, which is, which is needed for, for times like this. Otherwise, it will be very difficult to survive if this continues for way too long. Basically, all I'm saying here is for you to be able to unlock your potential as a person. The time has come to a situation where you cannot depend on your organization to support you fully. You as a person have to potential because once you find your potential and you back it up with action, it becomes a superpower. And once it's a superpower that is unique to you, you're definitely, definitely going to succeed. Definitely going to succeed. I'd like us to watch this. To watch Tris, I wanted to bring you out here before we go to the stadium. This is right here is what I call the calm before the storm. I want to bring you out here so you can visualize making those plays, visualizing yourself making those tackles, visualizing yourself playing as hard as you can play. I want you not just to participate in the game. I want you to dominate the game. And this is just the life message, Tris. A lot of people just participate. They just show up. And they're okay with that. They just go through the motions. There's two types of players in this world. Just to be real with you on a life level, Tris, there's two types of people in this world. 
people who participate, meaning they, they just show up, they want to pat on the back because they just show them to the game, they're in the game, they want just the medal no matter what place they get, they're good with that. And that's okay. There's this other type of person, this other type of player. This right here is a player that everybody talks about. This is a player that when people buy their jerseys, Michael Jordan, Tom Brady's of the world, all of these people, Allen Iverson, this person right here, they don't want to just participate. They want to dominate. They want to take over the game. When the pressure is on, they want the ball. When the pressure is on, they're telling the coach to call their number because they know they're ready. And the reason that they're ready because they came out and did something like this. So um, we're rounding up the presentation, like I said. Um, I want to talk about your superpower, I want to, which I believe is everybody's talent or your gift. What is a talent or a gift? is a skill that you have to do something very well that usually a lot of people don't do as good as you do. Why do you need to discover your talent? You need to discover your talent because your talent with your passion and action becomes your superpower. And your superpower is something that nobody can take away from you. Your superpower is what makes you unique. Your superpower is what helps you find your purpose in, in life. Your superpower is a co confidence booster. Your superpower is the most important investment you ever make in yourself. And guess what? It increases your chances of success in life. So I'd encourage everybody watching me today, if you take away anything from this, from this presentation, yes, COVID is here, but COVID cannot take you down and out. If you're willing to look inwards, discover and definitely you will succeed. How do you discover your talents? You expose yourself to the activities you enjoy. You stay tuned to your inner being. And at the end of the day, you do not be afraid to let some things go. You validate your interests and you let yourself express yourself. And I'll give you this uh, tip as well. Allow your children do the same. I believe we cannot train our children or bring up our children in the ways we were brought up. So I would recommend and I would really appeal to parents to actually support your children to be able to discover their talent early and able to use their talent early as well. Because whatever you want to do in life, you need time for it. So I would encourage you to encourage your children to do the same. What are the ways in which you can develop your talent to unleash your potential? You have to be intentional. You have to be committed. You have to have a singleness of purpose. You have to be expressive. You have to be creative. You have to have expert instruction. Why do I say that? Well, you have a gift, for instance, um, you have a child, I'll use an analogy of a child that likes soccer games and the child probably is gifted in scoring goals. That child needs to back that gift up with expert instruction. How do I mean? You sign up the child in a soccer club, okay? You ensure the child goes for the practice. By the time the child does that, over time, he becomes what? A gifted person. And in that, you're helping him unleash or her unleash their potential and um, um, and achieve greatness. A couple of valuable resources that you might want, um, like I said, is um, I'm an author of a book, co-author of a book that talks about raising children to enable them explore their talent. It's available on request if you're interested. And of course, um, there's a book as well on children that are... Um, that are, uh, that are upsetting the status quo. Uh, this is a book about 24 child entrepreneurs who are actually doing good stuff. What do I mean? They don't need to be adults to be able to, 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 to make a difference. Um, my name remains Inka Thank you for listening. Pastor Emmanuel, over back to you. So once again, um, thank you, Mrs. Yinka, for an amazing presentation. Amazing presentation, amazing presentation. Um, one thing is for sure, 
um, the stakes for success have always been high. Now the stakes are higher. The stakes have always been high. Now the stakes are higher. So um, like never before, um, we have to invest in ourselves. And one of the key things we must do is collaborate with others and um, so much to so much to so much to do so much to learn personal development is the way to go all right so uh, quickly we will open it up to discussions and interaction right now all right so if you have your questions you have comments you want to make all right this is the time to uh, this is the time to do that we will have about 30 minutes for that all right so if you have questions you have comments um this is the time to do that quickly um you can just indicate um unmute yourself and then um ask your questions <coughs> can i ask my question Yes, please. Yes, please. Go ahead. Sir. Okay, I was I was waiting for prompting. Uh, first and foremost, thank you so much for putting up this uh, seminar. It was very enlightening. Um, hello. Mine is a. Uh, hello. Yeah, my my own. Yes, I go ahead, sir. Request to the host. Uh, unfortunately. I was uh, hosting another meeting. I came in and out at particular points, and uh, from the parts that I listened in, it was very, very awesome and uh, very enlightening. Both speakers that I met. Uh, what I'm asking is, are we going to be able to have audio of this presentation for us to listen to thereafter? Yeah. Okay. Um if you have been taking note of your screen well i've been trying to record yes. this yes. session so it's on record all right and so what what we will try to do is after this we will um try to share the um, recorded files hopefully the internet hasn't messed us up so so much because that has been our biggest difficulty in doing this but we will see what record we have and try to pass that across. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Hello? Hello? Yes. yes okay, please. good evening. My name is Magdalene. I have a question to ask a female presenter. Thank you very much. That was awesome. Um, you said something about discovering our talent, our gifts. What do we enjoy doing? I could remember um, I'd worked in my former organization for over 10 years and somehow it had to go down and, you know, I had to start my, something for myself. I, I discovered that I like organizing events and I had to go into events planning and management. Okay, so now um, COVID-19 came and we can't do, I can't do events anymore. And I don't see, I don't see us doing events, say maybe from now until July, uh, I mean, August, September. That is hopefully if COVID-19 goes. Do I have to look in what again I talent? Yes, there's something I also enjoy doing. I enjoy going shopping. I enjoy shopping. So I'm actually looking at having to start a business, having to, you know, like you go shopping and you ask, I mean, you get people that you could do their shopping for and stuff like that. But you see, I'm afraid of starting. Okay, especially with what um, our first speaker, Mr. John, said that you have to um, digitalize whatever it is you're doing. As in, you have to make the internet... He said something about, uh, you know, putting your business on the internet. Okay, so um, how do I go about this? Yes, madam. Are you done? Okay, yes, please. You can go ahead. I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you so much for the question. Um, I have a couple of ideas for you. Okay, you talked about event planning. Um, I know that, yes, because um, of COVID, a lot of people are not doing events right now. But do you know that there's something called, I've seen it online, and I've known some people that have done it, not in Nigeria, though. It's called, a, it's called virtual parties. 
Mm-hmm. There's a lady that does virtual parties. That's something new, just like Mr. John said. You just need to find a way to transpose or trans I mean or transform your business that you do on um, and that you do online. I mean that you do offline online. So for instance, you can still do your event planning, but this time around, the only thing missing will be you have a limited crowd of people that would attend. How do I mean? People are still gonna have birthday parties, people are still gonna mark. Um, naming ceremonies. Yes, you might not be physically there. Well, you can be physically there if there is no lockdown rule. But what you do is you still go ahead with planning the cake, planning the event, p- providing them with the cake trap, providing them with flowers or anything of that sort. So it doesn't shut down. It doesn't shut down your business. It just means you have to think differently about your business. And at the same time, you have to give your customer additional value. You need to ensure that, you know what, for example, now, if I wanted to have like a 10 year old birthday party for my daughter, instead of everybody coming to the house to say, okay, we'll have the cake, we'll do the party plan. And you can decide to say, you know what? Yes, you can still have the, the, the birthday party, but it can be virtual. And then whatever party packs they have to give the children, you can decide to say, you can give me all of that. I would ensure it's delivered to each of the children based on where they are. How does that sound? To you? Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Now, on, 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 on your personal, on your second question that talks about personal shopping, that is a fantastic idea. And if I were you, I will jump on it immediately. And guess what? It doesn't get any easier right now. I'll tell you why. All you need basically is to ensure you have a presence online, right? It could be a, I mean, it could be a landing page, not necessarily a full website. You have a page enabled to process stuff. How do I mean? People should be able to say, this is what I want to buy, or they find a way of giving it to, of sending in touch with the, um, with the delivery, or you have an arrangement with the delivery company or a logistics company that has, it de- that has it delivered to them. I can tell you something for free. Even since they have um, lifted the lockdown rule, I have not left my house to buy anything. Hmm. Why? And I don't intend to leave my house in a while to buy anything. So what am I saying? That is a fantastic, um, that's a fantastic business you want to do. Everything yes. I have done, I have done it over the phone. So hmm. I would encourage you for you to go ahead and find a way to start that business. And, you, and my details are out there. You can call me up and I can give you a couple more ideas. I'll be happy to give you ideas. That'll be nice. That'll be very fun. I'm grateful. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Pastor Emma, please, may I say something? Um, this is um, for show. May I say something to that? Yes, go ahead, please. All right, thank you. Um, I, I looked at the, the, the congruence of the two um, presenters. And I would just like to bring some things, brass tacks, some ideas, some practical I- ideas very quickly. Um, if you don't mind sharing Yinka's um, page where she talked about the losers and the winners. Yes. You want I would to like to just touch on you? each of those and give some practical examples of what people can be thinking of. Yes, please. In terms of what is happening, and then you would, uh, what's the word now? You would overlay it and then give people what they want to pay for. Before it used to be parties. But when you look at all the requirements that you, all the things you were putting into it before, you can put it in different things now. So what do people want to do? They want to buy stuff. You can go and buy it for That's organization. They want to uh, get clothing. You do that. But make sure you put it on the internet, like Mr. Epike said. Yeah. What, makes, what, what that does for you is that you reach more people than you normally would have reached in your own small space. So think about it along that, rather than saying parties, think about it like, what do people want to organize? What do people do on their daily lives in terms of education? Can you help them get teachers across the internet? Can you help them do, um, manage their children? Can you do a system where you can do internet access to manage children across the homes and all that? I'm just saying, is this, as long as it is event and as long as it is planning, Make sure you put your energy into something like that. So thank you, Aminka, very quickly, please. Okay. Um, (laughs) 
losers. Let me start with the tourism. Agriculture. See, agriculture has moved online right now. In fact, this is a good time to get into agriculture, like I said the last time. Please, if you do not know what to do at all, get into agriculture. But don't just do agriculture in terms of farming alone. You can actually bring all manner of goods and services from the agricultural value chain and put a process that is easy for people to reach from the farm to the city. Now, you can, there are so many farmers right now that have said or would have asked, but no, but for you to not just, not only chain of agriculture and fit, because it is going to change and it's going to blow up as things begin to ease. Sorry, I don't want to take your time, but I mean, I just said, let me go through that for some practical things we can do. Thank you. Yes, um, my name is Ane Jokirene. So, I just wanted to add something to what FLS said and um, um, what you said about events. I think the major block that people have is because people are thinking, people that are in event business, they are still thinking in terms of an event has to be with a physical venue. You need to right now remove that physical venue from your thinking. Once you remove the, the block of the physical venue, you will start thinking in ways unimaginable. Basically, just like FLS has said, it is about you know, being able to ensure that something goes with regards to a physical event. So right now, the physical event is, sorry, the physical location is what is being removed. So just remove the physical location and then think about every other thing and then think about putting it all on a platform that has to do with using tech. Basically, any event, like we said, now you just cannot say you are not tech anymore. You have to just learn tech. You need to look for the right tech that will enable you seamlessly deliver on an event. It might be a, a general meeting of an, or an annual general meeting of an organization. You just need to think of how to set it all up, get the comedians, get whoever, the entertainers, get whoever, the DJ, whoever it is, and have a way to seamlessly move people from one experience to the other. And before you know, people will have a wow experience without a physical location. So it's just all about that. Uh, all about that. Now, if, um, I don't know if anybody here has watched uh, the movie Ready Player One. Ready Player One. Now, if, that's, if, if you've not watched that movie, please, I'd like you to go and look for that movie. It's called Ready Player One. Ready Player One. Now, that movie is basically showing us how the world is moving, where the world is moving to. So I think when you watch that movie, it will help you a lot. And then another thing, again, um, with regards to what FLS said about the tourism world, right now, there are apps that have been built to give people virtual tours. So people that are in the tourism business, right now, they should be thinking in terms of, what app can I uh, create, okay? Who and who can I bring together for us to put our heads together and create an app where we create a virtual world of, of Nigeria or of, of a particular area and have people come in and experience them. Now, virtual reality is becoming even more and more uh, something that everyone should look into. You know, I was in a webinar recently and somebody was sharing their experience that how he traveled somewhere and he went for one exhibition and uh, at a, a German museum, I think it was from Germany, museum came to the exhibition and they said they, you could take a look at their museum. And the person walked up their side and said, okay, so how do I do that? He was expecting them to, you know, start taking details and scheduling things. They said, no, you can see our museum right here. And they just simply gave him that's this thing to wear, and immediately he wore it. He found himself in their museum and had a total uh, experience, an, an amazing experience with regards to, um, uh, you know, what they had in their museum. So basically, people need to start thinking in terms of, okay, how do I create an app that can do this right now? So we need to be thinking more in terms of tech, thinking more in terms of leveraging tech to seamlessly deliver on things. That's just what I wanted to ask. Thank you. So if you have questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask your questions. If you have comments, feel free to uh, make your comments. Um, my Kano, I see you raising your hand. So go ahead, unmute yourself and ask your question or make your comments. Thank you. We have um, about six more minutes for um, the session of the section of questions and comments. So. Um, if you have your questions and your comments, feel free to uh, come in at this point. Don't wait for um, anybody. The system is set up in such a way that 
you are on you are able to unmute yourself by yourself all right so go ahead um take turns unmute yourself ask your comments uh ask your questions make your comments and then we'll take it up from there all right. good evening everyone good evening okay um i'm sorry i i was very late i couldn't connect because of the rain but then i feel like i should ask because we're already talking about events um planning like in the virtual event that we see right now where is the place of the photographer and the cinematographer you know why because for that particular person he probably needs to be there and then right now people aren't really saying come you know so what does the person do how will the person you know still be relevant even in these times um pastor Emmanuel, can i take that Yes, please, go ahead. Okay. Uh, Madam, are you a photographer or do you operate in the photography space? I'd like to yes. understand that. My husband is a photographer. Okay. So how has business been? I'll ask you a couple of questions. How has business been since the beginning of all of this? Very um, slow. Lockdown? In fact, we almost do not get any um, referral or any jobs at all. Okay, what of if, I mean, what of if, I mean, how tech savvy is he? Maybe on a scale of one to 10, let's say like 7.5. That's great. So all he needs to do, for instance, um, being tech savvy on a scale of one to five is, um, what about him, just like uh, what some of the contributors said, what about him putting out content or courses where he teaches people to take their own photography? to okay. do their own photography and all of that because okay. i know of a lady who is i know of a lady well she's not in nigeria anyway who is not um, um a photographer by profession but she learned over the years because she's into products to be able to photograph her products and for the past four weeks she's been running courses on how people can take photographs for their products or their or whatever they're selling because right now, even if you wanted to go to a studio, maybe the studio is shot, the studio is not available. And all she did was she set up this five part course. Uh, she called it Add to Cat, where she took different things, um, different, I mean, she did it as a five part uh, course and she was charging $20 or $25 for each course. And she ran it as a masterclass online. And if you registered, you can watch a replay for a short time and then, just like FLS said, she's, she can repurpose that course over and over again. Mm. So maybe for your husband, the issue now is not necessarily having to take uh, pictures of events, but having to now sell his services in a different way. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I hope that helps. Yes. Sorry, may, may I add something to that? Thanks, Inka. May, may I add something to that? Yes, sir. You know, one thing we don't... Can I, can I go ahead, sir? Pastor Emmanuel? Yes, by all means, go ahead, sir. All right. One thing we also don't do in Africa or in Nigeria is we do not document properly. A photographer is still the best documenter, forgive my English, ever. What if your husband goes around and documents what is happening in his environment at this time to say, this is Lagos today, and you consistently put content out or in your, on your page, about what Lagos is happening today, you'll be surprised what would happen. One or two of your photography may be what somebody will pick up and they will have to pay you for it because it's your intellectual property. And it may not pay you money today, but if people can say, oh, this person documented Lagos all through the COVID-19 period. I have not seen any such site where someone goes out and says, you know, some people have um, this, um, what do you call it now? This thing that flies, forgive my what? English. Um, drones. Drones. drones, drones, drones. Thank you very much. Drones, where you can take a drone picture of all of a place on a regular basis all through this period. You become the person that has documented what has happened. What has happened right now, we don't really have proper documentation of, of Lagos all through this period. It's only in bits and pieces. Imagine somebody has set out to say, you know what, from today, I want to document what this area or this state or this position looks like all through this period do a collage of some sort and put it online every day you'll be surprised how many following you will get 
where people will come and say, hey, and then one day, and I'm, and, and these are the things that happen because it's, it's not normal. Somebody will, what if CNN calls you and says, hey, that guy that has been working, can we buy this off you? It's will more than any photography you want to do again in any one day. Think about it. All right, let, let, me, just, let me just add something. If you, if you think a little bit backwards, you would remember what I said earlier on. If you were to ask yourself the same questions, everything that you were doing before now is still being done. That's something I don't want us to forget. Whatever you were doing before now is still going on. Human needs have not changed. The only thing that has changed is how those needs are met. People still need to take pictures of their, in this lockdown, um, we had a, a, a birthday party. People still need those things to do, but we had it just within the house. Now, remember that you have a laptop. Your laptop is a two-way system. Remember that. You can host you can take pictures remotely. What you will have to do is sit ahead of time and show the, the host how to use, document what is going on and then. So don't, don't just look at it in the looking at things from products, people, and we're looking at things from the physical locations. You have to transcend that and begin to ask the same question. People are going to need to take pictures. How do I get into their houses and take those pictures? And then how do they send it back to me? They can take the pictures themselves, send it to you, and you do the job that you need to do on your, on your studio work and, and perfect those pictures and still send it back to them. Everything that you were doing before now is still needed. The only thing that has changed is how you do it. I just wanted to put that in so that it can empower you to think about this thing yourself. You know, sometimes we, 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 we can't think about it because we really don't know how to think about it. Can I ask something to that, Pastor Ima? Okay, go ahead, sir. Okay, yes. Now, what I wanted to add is, is uh, with regards to the photography thing is this. Uh, FLS already uh, talked a bit about it. But what I just want to add for the lady is this. There are sites where, um, I don't know if he's also a videographer, because uh, my, wife, my wife has a colleague that presently is, is trying to build um, a videographic collection, and there are sites where he can put up these um, images, okay? Just like stock in, in, uh, videos that people can get. Some of these videos you watch, you see them use stock videos. There are sites where they sell them. So people just, go about, shoot them, and just sell them. So you don't need to have contact with anybody. You can go and shoot nature. You can shoot anything. Then Google, and you come across sites where you can sell this in dollars. Not even Naira. In dollars. If you are a very good photographer, that is a very, very wonderful means of income. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Yeah, good evening. Um, may I go ahead, please? Yes, please. Introduce yourself and then go ahead. My name, my name is Elizabeth Onifadi. A quick one, just to the lady who said she's afraid to step out. Um, all I have to say is that um, it doesn't matter if you don't have money. You can approach people who actually, right now, because of this COVID situation, a lot of people have their items and they don't know how to get it because most people are not coming out. So if you can target people who, you know, have this, especially, like I said the last time we had this se session, that um, I started this farm direct thing. And believe you me, on the one day, we sold out some farmers' um, fish farm, and people are calling and calling and calling. So there's nothing, and I, I, didn't, I didn't invest anything into that. You know, we didn't invest anything into that. So you can actually link up people and make sure, find, just like uh, Mrs. Um, Yinka, Mrs. Yinka said, that, you know, you, you need to get people's lists. And all that, but never be afraid to launch it. I like your spirit because you're already not, you're not afraid. You made the first step. 
And the next step is that money should never be the issue for not starting a business. It should never be the issue for anybody for not starting a business. Once you're interested in something, just look for the person closest to you who have those things that you're interested in. Approach them. And then we have the grace. We have favor. That's where to begin. So never, never, ever let money stop you from doing you know, what you want. Thank you very much. Over to you guys. Thank, thank you so much, um, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we've had an amazing session. We've, we've had an amazing time. All right. Uh, we'll be closing shortly, but before we do, um, let me bring up our senior pastor, um, the initiator of this um, project, um, Apostle Israel W. Abam, to give us um, closing remarks, and then I will be back to give us some announcements on how we will proceed going forward. Remember, it is a series. It's not just a one-off event, all right? So I'll be back after um, the Apostle gives us his remarks. So over to you, um, Pastor. Yeah, um, I want to say thank you to you all. We've really had an amazing time today. And I want to really, really commend the two presenters, Brad John and Sister Inka. Thank you so much for all the hard work. It's really, really eye-opening. Many of the things you share are really enriching. And I am very hopeful that those who were able to connect and stay connected, of course, we've had tremendous challenge with uh, the internet. I, I, they read to me what um, Brother Anej uh, said, we have internet, we don't have service yet. Uh, when shall we have the service? But we thank God that we've been able to come this far. I'm also hoping that in the next session, we'll be able to increase um, participation, that the internet will have service, and a lot of people that registered will be able to connect with us. I want to say this uh, from what the two speakers had said. What came to me was the change of mindset. It's very important that we have a change of mindset. Many of the things we have been doing can still be done, but they cannot be done how we are doing them, which of course includes church. I mean, we are all witnesses to it now. We see that church can't be done right now the way we were doing church before. So we have to make that mental transition to be able to stay relevant in the future. Uh, Brad John put it right. Always think about the internet of things. There is no aspect of what we do that cannot be digitalized. We just need to think the how, and then we'll still be relevant. Thank you so much, everybody. I'm, I'm trusting that we've had a great time and that the next session will even be better. God bless you all. Thank you so much uh, for the opportunity and the privilege to uh, put this together. All right, so um, we are coming to an end now, but just to take us back, and um, what I would love to say, first of all, um, since I am the host, I'd like to also specially thank our facilitators today, Mr. John um, and Mrs. Yinka. Amazing presentations. They've been enlightening and um, you've provided so much insight um, as to how we can go forward from now. Um, remember, we are back again next week on the 21st on the 21st, it's a Thursday, same time, 5 p.m., 5.30 to 
to 8.30, to 7.30, sorry. Uh, we'll be back. Um, hopefully, we're able to get in on time and we'll have two more presenters. And I know them personally. They are excellent and um, they will bring us a lot of insight. And then um, we will share out a form um, in the registration process. Many of us provided information as to um, some issues we, we want to make sure are handled. We've had the first session. I hope that some of those issues and questions have been handled, but we will share a feedback form, all right, to all those that have participated. You can add uh, further comments, things you want to make sure are handled and addressed. And hopefully before the end of the series, all your questions and um, issues will be addressed by insight as they present all right so thank you so much see you again next week uh, same time um stay informed stay safe god bless you